Ever imagine cruising in your Jeep, you know, top down, sun shining, embracing the open road, and then bam, your car just bursts into flames. Okay, okay, a little dramatic, maybe. But for over 150,000 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Wrangler Four Eyes owners, that fear is uncomfortably close to reality. Yikes. Right. So we're diving into an episode of the podcast, The Case, where they really dig into like the nitty gritty of car failures and recalls. And this time they focus on this Jeep Four Eyes recall from September 30th, 2024. Oh, I heard about that one. What's the deal with that again? So it boils down to a fire risk. Oh. Apparently it stems from potential damage to the battery cell separators, which, you know, they're like the barrier between the positive and negative parts of the battery, preventing short circuits and mm -hmm. wolf fires. And we're not talking about your average AA batteries well, here. These are the batteries powering the whole hybrid system. Exactly, the whole shebang. And those things pack some serious energy, don't they? Like way more than your typical car battery. Well, absolutely. We're talking a hefty 17.3 kilowatt hours. To put that in perspective, that's more juice than some homes use in a day. So yeah, when a battery that powerful has issues, it's not just a matter of, oh darn, my car won't start. It could get, uh a lot more exciting. That's one way to put it. Thankfully, Stellantis, you know, Jeep's parent company, is stepping up. They're offering free battery replacements to all the owners of the affected vehicles. That's good to hear. But isn't there also some talk about a software update? You're right. It's not just a simple swap and go. Yeah, something about the battery control module needing an update before they put in the new battery. You've got a good memory. Yes. Stellantis is making that software update mandatory. Wow, it really shows you how complex these systems have become. Totally and how important that software is in managing all that power safely. For sure. And it's not just a handful of vehicles we're talking about here. This recall affects Jeep Grand Cherokee and Wrangler 4 z models made between 2020 and 2024. That's a huge chunk of their lineup. Right. And it even includes 1,064 replacement batteries, ones that were manufactured before March 31st, 2023. So even some people who already had their batteries replaced might need to check if their vehicle is part of this recall. Exactly. So if you're listening and thinking, wait, is my Jeep part of this? Where do you even start? Well, the easiest way is to grab your vehicle identification number, your VIN, and head over to the Mopar website. It's like your car's fingerprint. You'll find it on your registration, insurance card, usually on the driver's side dashboard too. And for anyone with one of these Jeeps, you'll notice your VIN starts with the number one, meaning it was made in the U.S., where these particular Jeeps are manufactured. Okay, so this whole recall thing got me thinking about the price tag of these potentially flammable Jeeps. Yeah. For anyone wondering about the damage a brand new Wrangler 4xe is going to set you back around $50,695. Oof. Right. And if you're looking at the Grand Cherokee 4xe, well, that's a bit pricier, coming in at about $60,490. Yeah, not exactly chump change. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. And you know, while I was looking into this whole recall thing for something the Case Podcast mentioned, really caught my attention. It's about the engine in these 4XE models. Oh, really? What about it? Well, get this. The engine, a 2.0 liter turbocharged, I might add, was originally designed for the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Wait, you're telling me they put an Italian sports car engine in a Jeep? That's what I'm saying. It's kind of wild when you think about it. It is pretty wild. I never would have guessed. Right. Like, it's one thing to share, you know, platforms or tech between brands, but putting his sports car engine in an off-road SUV, that's a bold move. Yeah, it makes you wonder if maybe there are some compatibility issues that they didn't fully anticipate. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, could an engine designed for a sleek Alfa Romeo really be equipped to handle the demands of a Jeep Wrangler 4 i say? Yeah. Especially with the whole hybrid system added in. It's a recipe for disaster. Right. I mean, it makes you think about the bigger picture here. Are we pushing the boundaries of technology too far without fully understanding the potential consequences? Exactly. And this isn't just a Jeep issue. The Case podcast pointed out that there's been a noticeable increase in recalls across the entire auto industry lately. So it's like a systemic thing. It seems that way. And it raises some red flags. I quit. Well, it makes you wonder if the rush to innovate and get these new models out the door 
is maybe compromising safety and reliability. That's a scary thought. It is, especially when you consider how complex cars are becoming these days. You've got all this advanced software, intricate hybrid systems, a million different components that could potentially go wrong. It's a lot for the average person to wrap their head around. You know, yeah. absolutely. And for someone who might not be a car enthusiast or a tech whiz, it can feel almost impossible to keep up with all these advancements, let alone make informed decisions about the vehicles they're buying. You're telling me I feel like I need a degree in engineering just to understand my car's dashboard sometimes. It really does. I mean, every time I get an oil change, I feel like they're speaking another language. I hear you. And it's only going to get more complex, you know. What do you mean? Mm. Well, think about it. We're moving towards electric vehicles, self-driving cars, all sorts of futuristic stuff. True. And with all that new technology comes a whole new set of potential issues and challenges. So how do we as consumers keep up? I mean, it's not like we all have engineering degrees. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? But even without being experts, I think we can still arm ourselves with some basic knowledge. Like what kind of knowledge? Well, for starters, we can try to stay informed about these issues. Read articles, listen to podcasts like this one, you know. Good point. And don't be afraid to ask questions. When you're buying a car, talk to the dealer, do your research online. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be to make smart decisions. It's all about being proactive. Right. Exactly. Take control of the situation. Don't just blindly trust that everything will be okay. So this Jeep recall, it's really just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? I think so. It's a symptom of a much larger conversation that we need to be having about technology, safety, and the future of transportation. So where do we go from here? What's the takeaway for our listeners? I think the biggest takeaway is that knowledge is power. The more we understand about the vehicles we rely on, the better choices we can make. Absolutely. And we shouldn't be afraid to demand better from the auto industry. Exactly. Push for transparency, accountability, and a commitment to safety. Well said. Well, it seems like we've reached the end of the road for today's deep dive, but this conversation is far from over. Not at all. To our listeners out there, keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep those engines running smoothly. And safely, of course. <laughs>